Hey guys, Brian here. Welcome to the video. So recently Taiwan had its 228 holiday to commemorate the victims of the 228 massacre in which KMT troops in 1947 reacted to protests and riots by angry Taiwanese people by going on a killing spree across Taiwan, ultimately taking the lives of around 10,000 people. So originally I had planned on spending the holiday visiting this place I'm about to show you because it kind of fits this theme but mother nature decided to give me the finger so to speak because it rained all day. So I had to delay my trip but here it is to go along with 228 and the theme of the painful KMT dominated past of Taiwan. This is the Jingmei Human Rights Memorial and Cultural Park. So quick travel info to get out of the way if you want to visit yourself. The closest MRT station is Da Pinglin Station. And once you get there, there are a number of buses you could take to Zhuangjing Zhongshui, which is the closest stop to the park. Otherwise, you can walk, but it would take at least 15 minutes to get there. So after the KMT did the 228 massacre, that kind of marked the beginning of the White Terror period. Taiwan was under martial law or military rule from the late 1940s until 1987. And it was one of the longest periods of martial law ever imposed on a country. This meant that during this time, the people of Taiwan basically didn't have any civil rights. Military leaders and police could and did prevent people from gathering in large public groups. They dissolved associations. They restricted freedom of speech, freedom of the press. They censored school lectures. And they could, if they wanted to, they could ban all religious activities. And they could and they did check people's private correspondence, like letters and telegrams. And they could enter and search your private property at any time. During this time, there were many places political prisoners were kept, but the two major sites were the prison on Green Island and this prison, the Jingmei Detention Center in Shindian District, New Taipei City. There is a lot more to this place than what I am showing. There are a number of different buildings that serve different purposes for the military and police authorities, but what I am focusing on is the detention center, because that was the main site where political prisoners were kept. So the overall site seems to have been in use since the mid-1950s, but the detention center wasn't built until 1968. The time period that the prison was in use for political prisoners, as I have read it, ran from about 1968 to 1992, when the site was renamed as the Coast Guard Command Detention Center. And eventually, in 2005, the site was taken over by the Council for Cultural Affairs of the Executive UN. They decided to preserve the site and turn it into a park. At first, it was named the Memorial Park of Court Martial during the period of Communist Rebellion. Then, it was renamed the Memorial Park of Court Martial during the period of Martial Law. Hold on, there's more. The name of this place proved to be very controversial, just like the overall topic of the White Terror. People disagree about this stuff, and they still disagree to this day. Later, in 2007, the Council of Cultural Affairs asked for and had granted the request that the park be registered as a historic building. During this time, preservation work had been going on at the site, and when it was completed, then President Chen Shui Bian renamed the park as the Taiwan Human Rights Jingmei Park. Later in 2008, when the KMT won the presidency again, the park was renamed to the Jingmei Cultural Park and got a lot of criticism from the public. And after some public hearings, they finally arrived at the current name, the Jingmei Human Rights Memorial and Cultural Park. Later, in 2010, the site was taken over by the National Human Rights Museum, and it is now run by that group along with the Green Island site. 
Okay, so now, guys, I want to kind of give you my own thoughts on the place. It is a great place for teaching people the horror of what it would have felt like to get on the KMT shit list during martial law. For the crime of saying or writing the wrong words or just behaving in a manner deemed suspicious, you could be arrested. They didn't have to notify your family right away, which would have left them worried and scared. Then they bring you in, put you in chains as they decide your fate. Either you get prison time, lengthy prison time, or you get executed at a different site. If you got to live, you could look forward to being kept in a tiny cell for most of the day, with maybe a brief period outside where you would be allowed to do laps walking around the tiny prison yard. Be kept with multiple inmates in your cell. It would be hot, damp, cramped. There would be bugs, flies, and mosquitoes. The food would suck. You might have to eat on the floor of the cell. If you were made to work and do labor in there, you would be working for 10 hours or more in a laundry or someplace. The temperature could get up to ridiculous levels and they would barely pay you. Your family, if they had the time and the means to visit you, would be monitored the entire time. Your conversations would be listened to. If you received a letter, it would be read and censored if they deemed it necessary. Also, there were word limits. You couldn't send a letter exceeding so many words. The medical care was poor. The authorities didn't care if people got sick or not. They didn't care if you got the drugs that you needed to survive or not. And that brings me to the imprisoners. These guys who worked in the prison and who arrested and executed and tortured people were monsters. Fanatical, ideological monsters who kept Chiang Kai-shek's portrait up everywhere. The guys who ate up the propaganda and swallowed it whole. The people who went to people's homes, pulled them out of their homes in the middle of the night, beat them, sometimes executed them, worked them to the bone, and didn't care a bit about their victims or their families. They probably thought they were doing the right thing, too. You know, they probably thought they were doing God's work, so to speak. And to go along with that, some of the things on the info plaques there at the site really stuck with me. So I'll just give you two. For example, during the period of the White Terror, the ruling Kuomintang authorities always declared that there are no political prisoners in Taiwan. They just lived like in an alternate reality. Like political prisoners? I don't know what you're talking about. We don't have political prisoners. That's not a thing here, right? Insane. And then the other one, with trial rooms in jails, the martial law section's detention center was deemed as the hell on earth as the fate of the victims were ascertained. So I'll leave you guys with this, not the regular goodbye, but this. This is what happens when authoritarian politicians and authoritarian political parties are allowed to take over the system. Learn your history, people so we can do better in the future. Thanks for watching.